Well, Dave, how lucky are we today? Incredibly. We are playing two beautiful nine-foot pianos. We're going to be looking at them and comparing the cream of the crop, I would say, of the European market and the Japanese market. Stick around to hear the Shigeru Kawai SKEX and the Bosendorfer 275 amazing concert length instruments. Stick around. Hi, I'm Dave Monahan from the Kauai Piano Gallery of Michigan in Detroit, Michigan. I'm Patrick Marr with Alamo Music, San Antonio, Texas in the Texas locations. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. This is our YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like our videos, leave us comments. We appreciate your support and we love to interact with you guys. Today, it's a pleasure being here in the Detroit Metro. Um, we're actually in Bloomfield Hills. We are. Yeah, uh, anything within 50 miles of Detroit. We it, use hands here. I know. It, it, anytime you ask for directions in Michigan, you, you get a hand and they'll, they'll point out where you are on the map. Um, today, we will be using our hands to <laughs> also map out some beautiful instruments. Um, Dave, I am super excited to be here. Uh, you know, the Kauai Piano Gallery here in Michigan, um, Alamo Music, we are part of the same family. Um, and we were talking about this, over 180 years of combined business. It's, a, it's incredible when you think about how many generations of families between us, your fourth generation, and I, I like to say that I'm fourth generation in the business myself. Um, our company came from Evola Music, which came from Gallagher Music, and I've worked for Evola Music for the last 30 years, and it's now transitioned into the Kauai Piano Gallery of Michigan. It's it's a ton of fun, and 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 like you said, yeah, fourth generation from both of us, and and. Uh, I think it's unique that we're doing this video today because you said you sold Bosendorfer for, for 20 to 30 years here. Um, Evola was a, a Bosendorfer dealer for very long. Now also you're a Shigeru Kawai, Kawai dealer. And so we, you know, I think your perspective on this is, is going to be, um, you know, you've seen the transition from the, the traditional Austrian company that has transitioned and then now is owned by Yamaha. Um, and then to see something that, you know, Shigeru Kawai started in 2000, was a part of a, a company that also started 90 years ago, over 90 years ago, um, the Kawai family. Uh, and these are two incredible instruments that I would say aren't, you know, to the average person, it's not like a Steinway D. It's right. not like everyone knows the name and, they, and they're like, oh, you have a Steinway or, oh, there's a Steinway on the stage. And of course, it's a concert and everyone's playing. These are a little more niche, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and we're talking about how many are made each year? I think they say they build 11. 11 each year. Um, and so we're sitting in front of, you know, something that craft, craftsmen have been working on and they only get 11 out. Um, and you were telling me about... Uh, for world. Not for the whole world. Here. Yeah. Not, not just here, for the whole world. And you were telling me about the artisans that put these together. Uh, we call them master piano artisans. MPAs. MPA. Okay. And I think we have two here in the United States, and I think the remainder are in Japan. And it is the cream of the crop of their, if you will, their craftsmanship and how many years they've been in the business and how they like to work and how many years they've been, the, the traditions have been handed down. And to become an MPA within Kauai is an incredible honor. Mm -hmm. And uh, the craftsmanship in the factory is definitely noted when you get an opportunity. Have you been to Hamamatsu before? I have not. No, that's on, it's on my very short list. Um, yeah, I, the, the, when you were telling me about how they how they craft each one of them, I, yes. it, it's, it sounds incredible. There's a the, the wall of, of people who, for a while they had a wall of everyone who yes. purchased an SK. Um, you get an MPA visit in your house uh, or in, you know, wherever the instrument's going, you get that. Um, but so you've, you've been, I've been to Hamamatsu, I've been into the factory, and I've been into the secret area, if you will, where okay. you watch the MPAs go into the wood rooms, and they actually will knock on the specific wood, and they'll listen. They'll listen to it. For acoustic property. Yeah. It's unlike anything I've ever seen when you figure that this individual is going to be choosing the heart and soul of what makes this piano the wood. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me about the name SKEX. Yeah. Um, and so originally, yeah, originally I think uh, Kawhi's nine foot piano was the EX. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think through that, the heart of their messaging is, is that the EX stands for? Experimental piano. Mm -hmm. What's unique about a Shigeru EX is they continue to move the craft forward. 
You know, we always used to say that Kawhi was the most advanced piano, and it really truly is, because even today, as the MPAs are working in the factory, they're working to build a better piano yeah. every single day. So if we're gonna try something new, we're gonna put a new piece of wood and try to see what its acoustic properties are gonna work at, they're gonna build that and see, is it gonna come out better? Or maybe is that not ready to come out yet? And so constantly improving, constantly. making the craft better. Uh, so, you know, incredible instrument. We're gonna hear it played here in just a couple minutes. Um, but also I wanted to touch on the Bosendorf for the 275, yes. uh, you know, I think it's an early 90s. I think we, we saw 93 is the, is the year. So this is pre Yamaha. This is Bosendorfer when it is, I would say, in its heyday of, yes. you know, they've, they've, been, they've been the longest manufacturer of, of pianos, um, Austrian. They have a really unique way of putting their pianos together that involves spruce. And you were mm -hmm. telling me about the, the rim. So what makes it Bosendorfer unique is it's butcher block design and they glue all pieces of spruce together and then basically it's a very long piece of wood. Mm -hmm. And unlike a rim press that we would use in traditional piano manufacturing today, they'll cut a kerf cut. So they'll take that blade and they'll actually mold or bend that piece of spruce all the way around the rim and then they'll place spruce pieces back into the rim. Wow where it's necessary to go back into mm -hmm. it so that they can keep very unique angles. And we're gonna, we did some shots of that because it's just, yeah. it's gorgeous, gorgeous artisan work. Um, and really, I, you know, you look at that piano, you look at this piano, there's so many beautiful aspects that we'll get into, um, but I wanna take a listen to them uh, and, you know, hear the tonal qualities difference. We're miking them up the same, um, but we're gonna be playing both of them and just, we'll take a listen, we'll come back and talk about some key features like the Millennium 3 action, um, and uh, and the cape, the capo bar, yes, cap, capo the capo bar, bar. Yes. Um, that you know I think make these two very unique designs um, that aren't afraid to push the limits of what a piano can be and what a piano traditionally historically has been mm -hmm. um, to you know very brave manufacturers putting their name on something and saying this is the best thing that we're going to make and so I would say one of the best European pianos available ever made. The 275, one of the best Asian Japanese pianos ever made, the SKEX. Let's take a listen. We'll come back and talk about some features.
Well, Dave, what did you think of the sound difference between the two? It really is, is remarkable, the difference of these pianos in the different types of settings. And I'm a firm believer that every piano has a heart and soul, and each is definitely different. This, I think, has a little bit more power than the Bosendorfer, mm -hmm. and maybe the Bosendorfer is a little bit more subtle. Yeah. I, I To your point, I you know, these the materials that these are made of come from living things. You know, the tree The tree had its life of its own. And I, I, I love that you, you were telling that story about how the, the MPAs go and they actually listen to the wood. Because you're, to your point, every everything has to come together and have significant value, especially at this price point. Both these yes. pianos are over $200,000 new. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're works of art as well as usable and incredible sounding instruments. So, I mean, there's, there's little, there's, little wrong with either of these instruments if you could find anything um and uh and so i you know i want to talk about well, this one doesn't have any extra keys that but that's a feature right yeah <laughs> no uh, <laughs> it's hard to see those ones because they're black anyways it's like they, they like blend right into the the cheek block and into the sharps um but, years ago patrick i don't know if you've ever seen it they actually had a cheek block that would fit over the extra keys so you would close it off so you would never see them wow i, I know I guess that would help uh, when you're playing so you don't just get distracted. Oh, there's extra room over here. And, and uh, just a, a very cool, that, you know, that's one of the things that makes that a unique piano. And, uh, you know, talking about uniqueness, I, I think going over some of the features that make each of these unique, the SKEX uh, and Kawhi in general, their, their Millennium 3 Action is something that they're very proud of. Not only do they apply it here at their top of their line, they, they put it at every level um, below and all their grand pianos, they're going to have, um, a version of the Millennium 3. It's going to have the carbon fiber. It's going to be precise. It's going to mm -hmm. hold the test of time. Um, and they really stand behind that. Um, we've done videos on that. Please watch the Millennium 3 action if you've seen that. We've done videos on the SKEX. Really, the Bosendorfer uh, is just a treat to have here. And 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 it was, I was happy that it was here when, when, when I was able to come up and, and get to play it. I spent a significant amount of time playing it because it's just, you don't get the, the opportunity. Um, and so besides, you know, besides the, the Millennium 3 action, a couple other features that make this unique is uh, the, the bridge switches over to boxwood at the top mm -hmm. register, merely kind of makes it a chimey, beautiful instrument, Very, a lot of clarity once you get um, up into the top, the top registers. That is made to balance the heaviness of some of these longer extra bass strings. Um, I love the, uh, the maple the bird's eye maple, the flamed um, and quilted bird's eye maple. It's just one of those things. As, as guitar players, it's beautiful yeah. to see just the little, the little details that make this thing shine. Um, and then, you know, all the wood they choose, the spruce is all going to be aged at least five years or older. Um, just an incredible instrument. The rim, when you take a look at it, it's so thick. Yeah, and, and so they're really just trying to control all the energy on their soundboard and make this the best sounding instrument that can be made. Uh, the Bosendorfer, you were going to go over some features. I, I, I believe the, the, the capo bar, capo bar. So you're a guitar player. Mm -hmm. I'm a guitar player. And one of the things that we use uh, in folk music as well, and pop music for that matter, we'll use a capo bar. Mm -hmm. And we'll change where the nut is on the guitar itself. Well, what's unique about a Bosendorfer in the capo bar, instead of manufacturing it in the plate, mm -hmm. they add it after the fact. And it's adjustable. So that allows that technician to go in afterwards and create the proper down bearing in that section. Also during restoration, so 60 years from now, if somebody wants to do restoration, they can pull that capo bar out, put a brand new piece in, and then reinstall it. it. Whereas something like this, we would have to go in 60 years, we're going to have to look at shaving it a little bit and mm -hmm. adding a little bit to the cast. Yeah, and so um, that's it's just really cool to see. We, we're going to do some video of, of that uh, the capo bar, um, but really kind of just adds a, a uniqueness to mm -hmm. Bosdorfer. And again, both these pianos I think are are sought after because of their unique unique values that they have to offer. Um, again, the spruce they're the ones who use the most spruce in any of I the pianos. I think you say eighty eight percent of and, the pianos spruce. And and it's all is it it's all European? Is it from Austria? From I. I that, I mean, it's one of the unique aspects of what makes a Bosendorfer a Bosendorfer, but it's also that, that tonal end of it. You know, they believe that the, this is the, the, if you will, even the top of the piano is an extension of that soundboard. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a different way of doing it. But if you want it to have power, the power isn't necessarily there like a piano, like a mm -hmm. screw. Well, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it seems like it's almost a different philosophy it is. when creating, and, and they're both have the same goal, create a perfect instrument. Mm -hmm. Fine. And you were, you were telling me, you believe there's, there's, when you look, uh, the 275 isn't made anymore, but the 280 and the 290, super limited quantities made every year, probably 
similar to this 11 to 20. You know, mm -hmm. there's probably not that many being made. Um, and when you're creating that perfect instrument that you want on a performing arts stage or when you want with the symphony, uh, they really have to have an intention. And I know, and I know Kawhi's is all about energy and it's yes. about, you know, the drive of, of the piano, make it the best sounding that is possible. Um, Bosnurfer's been doing this the longest, the longest yeah. and they're in the, I would say the heart of, you know, where modern music was born, you know, in mm -hmm. Austria. Um, and so I, I believe their mission is similar in how do we create the best instrument and what does that mean to us? Um, and I think there's a lot of history that's involved there. Um, and then there's, you know, little quirks that are cool, the, the, added, the added notes. Hey, yeah. we're going to make unique piano pieces because of this instrument. So I think today in manufacturing, Bosendorfer builds a 225 and a 290 with the extra keys. Mm -hmm. At that time, they didn't have a nine foot with extra, or pardon me, they did have a nine foot with extra keys. Mm -hmm. Today, we do not. The 280 has just got 88. Okay. The 225 and the 290 have extra. The 225 has four extra, and the 290 actually goes down to a low C, has 96 keys. Wow. So, so yeah, so I mean, it's these little unique things, and, and then you talk about Fazioli, and it, yes. they add the fourth pedal sometimes. It's it's all I don't these, know what it would do. <laughs> it, 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 apparently, it brings it brings all the hammers up, like on the upright, like brings it closer, like that. Uh, so it's gonna quiet it down that much um, more. Yeah, so it gives you an extra layer. So, so you know, these high-level instruments have very cool stories. They have very cool features that you don't see on other pianos, um, and uh, and it's it's a treat to play them. And it was a, it was great to play both these today. Um, please leave comments if you've had the opportunity to play uh, one of the SKs, any of the line, but uh, specifically the SKEX, um, or if you've played a Bosendorfer and you've played the Nine Foot, so you've played the Imperial pianos. Yeah. It, they're they're treats and they're stories that stay with you forever. Um, and so please tell those stories. Let us know what you guys think. Let us know what you think the best piano in the world is. Um, I think we've been playing two of the top. Arguably one of the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it, it's, it really is a treat. And again, every single one is a little bit special and has its own unique story, um, but really just a lot of fun to play mm -hmm. today. Um, and uh, you know, and so we're gonna continue our quest to find the perfect piano, but it was, it was a treat to be here in Michigan today and to be playing on the 275 on the SKEX, incredible instruments. Um, if you guys are anywhere near in the area, it's worth making a trip out here to play these, to get your hands on them. Um, they are both special, unique, and you'll, it's a story you'll remember your whole life um, and getting an opportunity to play. Um, Dave, thank you so much for doing thank the video. You, Patrick. Yeah, we'll be bringing you more content from Michigan. Um, and again, we also have some quiet piano galleries in St. Louis, Kansas City, um, Traverse City here mm -hmm. up in, in- Traverse City. Traverse, okay. <laughs> Traverse, Traverse. Show the glove, where is All it? Right. So yes, <laughs> show the hand, Traverse City. <laughs> okay, and Motor City is down there. Yeah, southeastern <laughs> Michigan, yes. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, so come see us, come take a look, come play some Kawhi's, um, and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you.